Yoku here with our first installment of the cosplay workshops for uh, the Patreons. First one up today is going to be cosplay 000 or pre-planning or as I like to call it before you ever touch the fabric. First off I'm going to do a little bit about me for those of you that aren't super familiar with who I am. Listed at the top of the slide are all my social medias. I have a Facebook, an Instagram, a Tumblr, a Cosplay Amino, a Cospix.net, a Patreon, as you should all know, and a WorldCosplay.net to name a few. I'm a local cosplayer in the Pacific Northwest community. I'm out of Portland, Oregon. I'm finishing up my degree in psychology. I should be graduating in June. I've been cosplaying for about 10 years, but I've only been creating for about three and a half now. I'm an ambassador for We Love Colors, which I'll talk more about later today. And I've been to conventions in Oregon, Washington, and California through my Patreon as well as other means. I'm hoping I can start going to maybe some cons in Alaska like SenshiCon, maybe Hawaii Con, maybe some cons on the East Coast. But those are further up my milestones. I also won my first award this last July. It was a Journeyman Award. Um, in Nukon PDX Lite, and it was for my Sakuzao's Cafe U Latte, uh, Cafe U Late, which is pictured here below with photo by Studio Henshin. So for this PowerPoint, I'm mostly going to focus on one of the cosplays I finished most recently. That was No Flutter's Power Girl featured behind me. The wig and the goggles are over there, and I have a couple more supplies. But she's going to be the main focus on ways that I present some of this material today. So the very first thing that happens when you're about to do a cosplay is obviously you have to choose what cosplay you're going to do. So I always say start thinking big. I was thinking, well, I'm going to a Comic Con. I need something American comic superhero based because I don't have anything like that. Um, before I did like a vintage art design of Wonder Woman, but I really wanted to portray my skills at Wizard World because it's a big con and it was a chance for me to do a lot of social networking. And I also wanted a cosplay that I could take later to Sakuracon. And I remembered No Flutter that had these amazing designs. I was drawn to Raccoon Girl, her Wonder Woman, as well as Power Girl. I'd originally been going to be in a group for it, um, and so people kind of took their designated roles and I ended up with Power Girl. But the group dropped out, but I kept Power Girl. Because honestly, I really, really like her design, and I love the use of all the white and gold. And it really pushed my boundaries. So you want to toss out those obvious no's, like I just did. And you want to slowly narrow down your list until you get to the pinnacle of who exactly you're going to cosplay. Once you've chosen, you get started planning. So everyone goes about pre-planning differently, and we all have different ways of doing this. But mine is a very got to get all the details down and as much attention as possible because like I am with studying in college, the more I write or the more I say something over and over again, the more prone I am to actually remember the material and use and apply it later. And that same concept comes when I do cosplay. So the very first thing I do is I hoard references. If there's a 3D model available, like from a video game, like say League of Legends that has 360 views, I will find that and I will screenshot every angle. I will find fan art, I'll find official art, I'll find other cosplayers I've liked that have done the same cosplay or something similar. And occasionally I don't find good angles of things or I don't understand things and often I'll take a fan art interpretation of something. Um, an example of that are, see, these are some of the refs I used and printed out from Power Girl, like this kind of shows how her cape's actually flowing, which based on No Flutter's art, you can't tell. I also really liked this uh, Bishoujo figurine. I thought it gave more of a feel and a flow of kind of what No Flutter was going for. And then this is No Flutter's original art design. Um, there are some changes and modifications that I ended up making as well as there's quite a few differences from the actual Power Girl designs. I also used a cosplayer, um, which can be seen on the next slide once we get to that. So then what I went ahead and did is I broke down everything. Now that picture's kind of small, so these are some of my more blown up sketches. Um, kind of how I break down the goggles. What I do is I sketch everything out, 
And then all these little notes are notes on what colors they are, what types of materials I want to use. Up in this corner under the goggles it says maybe cardboard tubes. Um, it says that things are gold and there's a brown pleather. I actually ended up using craft foam and vinyl, but it gave me a good basis of what I was looking for. Um, I also have which wig I ended up using. It was an Art of Ferrari Classic Fairy Blonde, and I actually knew exactly which wig I was using for this cosplay. Um, here's another pictorial view, kind of what was happening, how I wanted the corset to flow, kind of how the bustle is going to end up, which was kind of scary, but um, you get a decent idea of how the bustle kind of ended up flowing based on the art design. And here's the last page pretty simple. It's just these weird shapes that go on her shoulders, which I ended up um, interpreting differently. Um, the rope I wanted, which I ended up using this really fancy rope I found at Joanne's that I liked with white and gold in it. Um, and then obviously the red cape, which says red casa and upset circle eyes because it was expensive, but it's so pretty. You know, sometimes, sometimes we splurge. <laughs> And then the very last thing I do when I'm breaking down and pre-planning is I make lists. I make lots and lots of lists. I love lists because I can cross things off and it means they're done and I feel more accomplished. Sometimes I'll write things down on lists that I've already done. It's just a personal thing, but it helps. Um, they're just lists of everything I need. I have like my wig, my contacts, uh, the base gloves, base socks. This was an example when... I knew I was going to be getting items given to me for my sponsorship for We Love Colors. So I went ahead and I kept that in mind. Um, my base gloves came from We Love Colors. They were uh, shoulder length gloves and I went ahead and brought them down over some craft foam. It's a couple layers of craft foam um, with the 3D texturing to give it the angles. And then that was the same thing for these belts actually an old pair of tights. They're imperfect tights that they sell cheaper that you can get and it's covering once again my craft foam which is all textured along here. Um, yeah. So I got a little ahead of myself but now that you've chosen a cosplay, now what? You've broken down everything, you've gotten some rough ideas, what do you do? Well you start planning it out. You have affiliations with people. Like I said, the Wheel of Colors is also a sponsorship, so that's where I got like some of the materials for this. I had supplies lying around, like I have a whole entire bag of craft foam on the ground. I didn't actually have very much of this lying around. <laughs> I had white cotton, which was underneath my corset. I had some boning left over. Um, I had the grommets in the back, the gold grommets. I had the lacing rope that was from my other No Flutter cosplay. And I had thread. Um, I had some other miscellaneous things, but I didn't have that much. Um, and then what your friends had. So my friends didn't have anything for this cosplay, but sometimes they do. Um, a lot of times I have a giant roll of interfacing and we just share it back and forth. Um, Mod Podge, I did steal Mod Podge from a friend because I was running out of my Mod Podge and in exchange she took some of my clear coat spray paint, those sorts of things. One of my favorite apps that I use is called Cosplanner. I'll go ahead and, um, yeah, so Cosplanner, there's a couple photos right there that showed some of the cosplays I've used it for, Cafe a lot, um, Yukata for Mercury, Princess Peach Lulu, and it's nice because like my to-do list that I can cross off, I can put what exactly I need to buy. This lets you put the cost of everything if you're trying to stay in a budget. It also allows you to put percentage of completion you are on certain aspects, which is kind of nice. So a lot of times I'll put like my wigs, what I need to make and buy, um, accessories. Sometimes if I have a big prop and a big costume, like you can see on there, I broke Candy Cane Misfortune into two parts. One part's for specifically her guns and the other part's for the costume. And I always tell people this, a lot of times people don't believe me, but I'm being serious. There's a whole entire community out there. When I say I'm online 24 seven, 
it means I'm mostly online 24 seven, but I'm always willing to talk to people. I'm willing to give advice. I'm willing to give feedback, point you in the right direction. If you have a question about like, what color you think this should be, where are good places to buy wigs? What are my experience with contacts? Like, feel free to message me. The same thing goes that there are so many cosplay communities on Facebook, on Cosplay Amino, on Instagram, on Cospics. There's, they're just everywhere. People have probably run into either a similar problem or they've made something similar to what you're making and can offer you advice for something. This is especially true, I would say, for the League of Legends cosplay community. They're incredibly strong and supportive of each other and people put up prop builds so that you can get a really good idea of how to do something. Um, people like Venzi, Danielle Borello, like they are active in those communities and will respond to you, which is kind of crazy and mind-boggling for some people. So my final step in this pre-planning process is shopping. You hoard coupons. Like, I can't even... That I can't, is a screenshot of what my phone looked like before I went shopping for Power Girl, but even just sitting on my desk over here, I have Joanne's mailers. <laughs> um, you can get mailers. Uh, Joanne specifically does mailers, emails. They have an app. They do text and they also have a student discount and you can use all of those at your purchase. I think I've used at most like 25 coupons on a single transaction. Um, a lot of other places also do similar things. We have a couple other fabric stores that are smaller that don't supply as much, but you can still get mailers and emails. You want to choose your stores, and the stores listed here are a little more specific to the Portland area, but you would have similar stores that apply to you. That I go to Joann's um, when I need a lot of basics, when I need my broadcloth and my cotton and my interfacing. Most of this is from Joann's. This is all Casa satin that they use for like wedding attires and fancy dresses. Um, I go to Fabric Depot if I need fur. They I don't even have any fur lying near me. They sell fur by like these massive bolts. It's not folded in half. It's not bad quality, but it's tons and tons of it. And then I go to Mills End, which is a local Portland based fabric store for things like silk brocades, custom prints. Their stuff's a little spendier, but oftentimes you, it's much nicer. You kind of pay the difference. And I'll be using some of that with my Magical Girl Espion coming up for SakuraCon are some fabrics from Mills End. You go to Harbor Freight if you need kind of more self-explanatory Home Depot and Lowe's style stuff, but they're very specific. Harbor Freight has tons of foam, they have Dremels, they have heat guns, they have all this great stuff and they're there specifically to talk to you about building stuff. Tons of cosplayers go to them. They are so used to it. They even have Ryan Wells, who's a local cosplay celebrity. Super nice guy. He goes and he runs workshops there for them. So super cool. They're very integrated in the cosplay community. And then Tap Plastics. So everyone probably has a store like Tap Plastics. Tap Plastics custom printed my lenses for me. I told them what color I wanted and then what diameter I wanted and approximately what width I wanted, which you can't obviously tell from this. Um, but they're actual like lenses. You can see through them and they're super cool and they cost me like $3 each. I kind of bargained with them. They're also local. They're cool about it. I told them it was for a costume. So those sorts of things. Um, just know where you're going. You don't need to overspend like Joann's and Michael's will often bust your bank for things like spray paint that you could get at Home Depot for a larger quantity at like two to three dollars cheaper because they're not expecting you to use it on craft type things. Um, I'm often wandering around Home Depot looking lost and people come and offer me help and I'm like, no, you can't actually help me. I don't know what I'm looking for. You know, that's okay. <laughs> they don't necessarily understand. Um, another great example is we have a store out here called Scrap PDX and basically what it is is people drop off stuff that they think could be reused. I used a lot of that in this cosplay. It's kind of crazy. Um, let me go over some of it. The front of this belt is a pin like that you'd wear. I think it says, I think I got it at PAX and I think it says something about Dell on it. I don't actually know anymore. Um, but that's what that is. It's great. The inside of it is a kid's car seat buckle. Both of those I got at like Scrap PDX for like 50 cents. Um, all these buttons, 
for googly eyes. <laughs> so technically, if I can move and shake, which I can't really in that cosplay, you'd hear the googly eyes shake around. Um, so just being creative and inventive, and those are all things that I found at this place called Scrap PDX. That people are like, this is junk. No one wants it. Um, I have another pin up here. I have another seat buckle, though, so this can come undone completely. But yeah, thinking outside the box. Save yourself some money. Uh, the very, very last step, right before you start sewing, is look online for patterns, tutorials, and ways that other people have already done it. Um, good examples of this is Venzi runs a giant hat tutorial. I've made several large hats, and I very much love that tutorial. It walks you through wire framing, using batting, stuffing it, fabric draping it, all those sorts of things. Um, thought I'd kind of be like, huh, how do I do this? without. Um, and also looking through patterns you have lying around. We had already done no flutter before. So luckily I had the 19, no I can't number 18, 19 pattern lying around. It's a simplicity pattern. I know it's backwards for you guys, sorry. Um, but yeah, I keep all my patterns. It's really good. You should consider doing that. I have a box of them over here. That's what this box is. Um, it's also where all my breakdowns go. I try to keep as much as I can, as many details of things, so I can use them later if I need to be. Um, kind of one of the last steps of pre-planning for this guy was, I do a lot of like math measurements on scrap paper. Um, this was just like an art newsprint sketch pad. I found it for $1.50 at a garage sale. It had like three or 500 sheets. Um, some of them have been sketched on, but I didn't care. It's great for keeping notes, um, for patterning. I do a lot of patterning on them, and then I tape them together, um, those sorts of things. But it gives you a good idea that I always have a ruler on hand so I can actually measure the actual sizes of things. This was me trying to figure out how big and how wide those goggles were going to be. And we'll end on a silly note. The goggles don't actually work. They match how the art looks. And they're probably going to be kind of big on my head right now. Um, but for a photo, we thought it'd be cool. Hey, I should actually pull them down, right? Oh well, yeah, no, those don't actually fit on my eyes at all. So <laughs> keep that in mind. Sometimes when you're doing it based off art, it's uh, choosing whether you want your artistic freedoms or whether you want it to be realistic and functional. The two don't always line up. But yeah, thanks for stopping. Guy Bye, guys. Um, have fun crafting. And let me know if you have any questions, comment below, send me a message, any social media, and I'll catch you guys around. Thanks!